Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Ludi tonight here on Splatoon Tourney. We have a Division X here tonight with us. Films Forever versus Shush in this week five. And we get to be joined with Pakun and Kion on the mic. Hello, hello. It's nice to see you both. Hello, friend, and welcome back. Hooray! I was just saying before we got live here that what a nice palette we kind of have going. I was told Pakun I loved his shirt. Kion's got a nice orange, and then I'm kind of sporting some green. But around the purple and stuff, it's just it's nice on the eyes. I like it a lot. It's a very bright, it's a very bright cl uh, collection of colors, I think. Very eclectic. Think. Yes. <laughs> that, that's a better word. But, uh, yeah, looking ahead onto these teams here, you guys. Um, Kion, can you tell me a little bit about what's going to be at stake here? Yeah, so uh, Foams and Forever, uh, Forever and Shush, both with two losses in their record. Effectively, they don't control their own destiny for um, top for top two. The group, group, if I'm not mistaken, Choo Choo is in second place with a loss. So really win and still be within range for playoffs, but it's a massive outside chance that we got going on for well, this moment. So it should be a lot of fun. Yes. Do you want the good news or the bad news? Throw me the bad news anyway. <laughs> uh, both teams are eliminated from the playoffs. That makes sense. So, best case scenario for them is that Choo Choo were to lose to uh, healthy diet food groups in their rematch at some point this week, which would make them three and two. Only one of these two teams could reach a three and two record as well, which yep. Choo Choo owns the tiebreaker over both of them. If it was a awkward three-way tie, then like the amount of wins that you have would be the tiebreaker for that. But when it's just two teams head to head and Choo Choo beat the dog snot out of both of these teams when they played them. So these two teams are, the good news is we're playing for pride today, which is That's the true. most important thing you can play for. Now pride is a sin 
but so is eating a lot of food for some reason. Like, damn, just let <laughs> people live their life. But that's what was on the line for today. And, uh, you know, it's more important than making playoffs. Also, you don't want to be known as somebody who has a losing record in Ludi, because then people are going to be like, were they really doing No, even though they were two months ago. So it's fair. I- and I'm and, and I'm glad you corrected me on the tiebreaker too because I looked at it at a glance like okay they're three and two but I had to if if if, if, if the math works I would be like okay one of them is guaranteed to be three and two but like which but would would, would the tiebreakers work out that way and I'm glad that you uh, glad that you called that out because I'm like wait a minute I'm sure this works out does it or were they both eliminated before I even spoke any words uh, when that happened Yeah the problem is osmosis was just too effective they they've already clinched their group as well there's no way yep. for choo choo to um jump ahead of them as the number one seed so it's uh that's locked um and even if it was like the the point tiebreaker scenario like it wasn't yeah. it wouldn't have to come down to healthy diet winning like they would have to like curb stomp and get rid of choo choo before like game eight basically which is unlikely how they're playing but still we got a fun match for you here tonight foams forever they're named foams forever because they usually number themselves after every tournament that they play so they're two and then they play the next tournament they're in foams three i think they're in like the 30s now so they're just foams forever hopefully oh well they have a twitter so maybe they're an actual team now which is what they should have been like two years <laughs> ago um and shush is what Fortnite? is that is that what that is I, I think their te- their team name is just based on their love for Fortnite, according to what they sent us. Which I mean, sure, I will still have a start. To- I'll have a quick talk with them sooner rather than later. But yeah, that's what their team name is based off of. Well, fair enough. I I I, I don't recall what Shush has to do with Fortnite. It's been a few. I don't either. Since I plopped that in there, I do see Balloon constantly posting things about Fortnite and related stuff though. I think, mo- I think the most I've seen players play Fortnite is where they just where they just mention offhandedly, or they just or they just mention it for a quick tweet, and then just said, "Oh yeah, we we want to give him Fortnite." And then the day just goes on for the most this part. This is the game I would rather be playing, and it's too bad I'm not really good at this. Instead, I'm really good at Splatoon, so I'm just gonna keep playing that competitively, and then Fortnite when I want to enjoy life. Actually, is what's uh, that's the vibe I'm getting. So so what so what you're so what you're saying is you just want is, is that you'll only enjoy Fortnite when when the vibes are correct and then Splatoon's like hmm maybe I do want to play a little bit of Splatoon for myself I guess yeah At least that's the vibe a, I got everyone's got a side game if you play complete Splatoon competitively you have a side game um, and maybe we can talk more about that a little bit later because there's only one person that has an actual shush in their tag in his half who's using the pencil <laughs> here and well well what? if uh, if you're not familiar with foams, they are known for being a little, uh, a little off meta, if you can say. That is, um, that is Bishop, by the way, on the blaster, and that was the first person I thought of when that new blaster came out with the Kraken and the Splat Bomb. It's like, okay, this player who is destroying people with blaster in Splatoon 2 now finally has an awesome kit to work with, and that's going to be trouble for everyone. Yeah, and that's that, and that was kind of the thing I was always saying is okay. Well, Bishop, known for blaster plays, will work out. To, there's a little nice little Zuka shot there. At least that lands. Um, how how does the rest of the team follow suit? I think it's the thing that was getting me is not just the blaster, but also the custom expo in the 52 gal, gal of course, um, on the side of um, Bones Forever there. So that was the only thing I, I took quick quick notes of. Of course, carbon rollers there too. They got three specials that are available. They're throwing everything right in right into the zone. There's a screen being dished out. Zuka shot, okay, gets gets another one, and then the second shot doesn't seem to land. Zone Z seems to be neutralized, go ahead. Is that Lord Beerus who just got eliminated by a Zuka? I think that's the ultimate sign that that thing is overpowered if it's knocking out Dragon Ball Z gods of destruction. Doesn't seem fair right there. Um, so, Josh has control of the zone. Vera is a player, I when I played against them many many years ago i think the thing i said was they use a random number generator to decide what weapon they're going to use every match because they made like 50 different things but carbon was like the the scariest weapon that they could use and when you got a comp around you that's paint heavy well the blaster's not going to put a lot of paint down that gal will and especially that xbox will as well the problem is this pencil does everything 
and will continue to do so even in the current patch that we are in as half is able to just kind of set up shop right there put some soda and will get lead for their team shush is the uh, orange team not the purple yes yes purple team is going to be full forever and shush is on the orange side and shush is just a little Locked, locked behind there for the most part. It looks like Foam should be able to move up just, just a bit shortly here. We do get to see Nokia with the jump there on top, trying to see if they, if they can get anything else going. And that, uh, and so far, it looks like they're just retreating as it stands. We do see that Zuka that was just popped as uh, as well, not able to find any value right out of the gate. They do got the screen and the triple splash down rolling along, which the screen just popped conveniently. Now the rest of Shush has to just wisely retreat. It's, a, it's an effective zoning tool if they if they're able to um, if they're getting everybody pushed back. And the zones are just able to get recaps just like that. Their pop gun. Fun little back and forth match right here. Nobody really establishing complete control of things. Nobody able to get a good lockout going. Some good trades back and forth. Special team throw in the zone. You'll love to see a Ludi set where it at least gives you the illusion that this is going to be competitive all the way throughout. But right now, foams. Uh, no wait, no. This is still Shush. Shush is the yep. the orange team. Um, not the purple one as our scoreboard indicates right here. Complete control of mid and some soda to work with now. Now we're going to see one team start to separate from the other. Yeah, and we get, and we're starting to see Shush just just trying to make take advantage of the space that they are building on top of it as well. At least they were trying to retreat once more. Once again, the screen has been dished out there <laughs> as well as we do get to see the zone retreat, zone being pushed in their forced retreat. It seems to have always worked every more often than not, and I don't blame them whatsoever. Effective zoning pushes Shush back just a bit, and Bones were able to get the zones back. They did go two down, but at least you got the zones back. You got to fight another day there, Bob. Okay, I was just about to say, how do you start getting set up? And both of your slayers getting eliminated is uh, not how you do it for Bones. Uh, you saw the x Blosh starting to push up, trying to put some paint down for the Carbon to End Blaster to work with in the enemy side of the base, but they both just got a race immediately. And now look at Shush pushing all the way up right here. The Zuka getting a cheeky kill on the x Blosh, taking out the backliner before they could even get set up as two more players from Foam goes down, and the clock starts ticking away. Half is set up here just to try to bleed out some more paint across the zone, but more players are falling in the favor of Foams as they do find a way with the Kraken to chase everybody else out here. So Foam still has one more chance to get back into this one and all the penalty points are already gone. The question yeah, is, can they get the splats to follow us up? And and what and when it, and what Foams has done at least to get the retake every time is, ju is just game being able to get the screen each go around. They got another screen that's just been used. They're dishing that out again. The, the rest of Shush has to retreat a little further back each time this happens, and they do, but at the same time, Shush is still able to temper themselves nicely. They did pop the cooler earlier. Now, can the Zuka find anybody else? Not quite. Oh. There's two down right out of the gate there for Shush. Bones Forever is still holding on to this zone there with three seconds left to go. Overtime is guaranteed as Bones there is able to eliminate that order T-Tech, and the rest of the members are just flying suit. It's Bones Goodbye. Forever winning this one. Goodbye. That's game one to Bones Forever. If Bishop was going to shark there in overtime, it had to have paid off. Like, if you're going to be that patient in that kind of a clutch opportunity, you have to make sure you deliver for your team. And they do just that. Able to take care of half. And it looked like one other player with chip damage as well to blow the doors wide open for the rest of the players. You, this exact play that we're showing right here. Able to take care of the T-Tech um, and start putting some pressure on the blaster all the way from mid, and that allowed the doors to open up for everybody else. The X-Blosh, look at the X-Blosh providing the paint for Vera to move up and just start smacking people in the head with a roller balloon trying to just make something happen. There's nothing there. So that whole play initiated from Bishop using the blaster like they've been doing for so many years. And and, and, ju and just being able to build on top of it, you know there are two Expo enabling that enabling that carbon roller to do the carbon roller things that I, that I've usually seen from really good carbon roller players, of course. Um, just being able to get just being able to get the final splats on top, and I, that that was just so well played. Again, but 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 again, I've always noted that the speed started it off, but how do you build on top of it? You know, there are two Bishop just just enabling with that blaster, just just kind of kick the doors open as you will. Now we go on to crab like clams. For the, for the second map and that's a great comeback though for foams maybe they can build the momentum uh, momentum a little bit more here a, a good back and forth game for both teams yeah um hey, hey we, we said they're both eliminated from the playoffs nobody told these teams they're playing they're playing like they got something to prove and uh Love it. Well, maybe they do I, okay so 
We know who Balloon is. We know who Half is. I don't know who Beerus is supposed to be, but fair enough. And who's this Dr. NCP <laughs> using the... Uh, that? Okay, so that is the Crab Tank um, Splatling edit coming out from the side of Foams Forever. And Archer going back to the end zap because somebody's got to use soda. But Archer's been using end zap for a long time, too. Used to be an armor bot with that end zap back in school 10 2. So kind of a natural selection over there. We still keep the soda. Well, actually, no, they didn't use soda at all last game, did they? No, no I don't know. I don't think they actually had any weapons that, that really used soda. They had, what, Trip Splash on, they had a Screen, the Zooka as well, and the Kraken. So yeah, they, it was a colorless comp that pretty much wanted. And now, you, and as you noted there, too, the Zap, the Zap was now dished out for their cooler options they want to take advantage of. Here. A little bit of brawl that happens there. All, all that's going to net, net is pretty much just still neutral ground for the most part. Zooka just takes one, one out of there. That was pretty nice, all things considered. But still, not not much ground left. Well, I said there was not much ground left. Looks like it's going to be sh um, shushed there, if I'm not mistaken, on the colors. It'd be able to push up ahead. It's three down already, and this should be a push that's coming up. Basket's going to be popped. The question is, can they get some clams to follow up right here? You got Balloon in a good spot to start ledge camping. Beerus, I'm going to take a shot and say that is Joe. One is Joe, and one is uh, Pelu. Um, yep. I just realized the other Pelu probably named Weiss over there the uh the angel attendant to beerus um and uh okay so you got underneath 60 on that push it, and more importantly you didn't really lose anybody they're able to recognize okay the push is dead let's still control mid and foams is not out of the woods yet even though the fast is close yeah Fo foams is still, is still holding on to, the, to a good amount of pressure there's a, there's a nice little pick there from that edit on top of it too just it's still it's just as you know there too retreating wisely being able to kick start another push and still they still had a good control of mid to make to make this one count ball's able to get that power claim in it's going to break the barrier there is there going to be any follow-up that that, <laughs> that would pursue there's okay the rt tech was just went down just like that all it did was cut the penalty points down but not get not get themselves cleared like power clamp if, if i'm not mistaken that free clamp really was picked up they just able to spawn the second one bones forever still pretty nice hold all things considered but I guess you get less penalty points along the way. A good push nonetheless, an initial push for Shush. Again, able to get below 60 and still have control of the mid at the end of it right there. That allowed them to get that second push going. The problem is they just didn't really have a lot of resources necessary to get the second one here, but still, it slowed down Foams to get control of mid, and now you're seeing Shush start to respond yet again. Half, not really, uh, I mean, you don't have an enemy pencil that you go up against, which is nice. And Weiss and, Weiss and uh, Lord Beerus doing a good job of cleaning up everybody else's. We're going to see a third push opportunity from Shush. And this one's going to do a lot of damage, actually, because that is a delayed wipeout on the side of Foam. Yeah, and the, yeah, but the question is, how, how much more can they get? They got they got a lot of clamps that, that, that they're moving up with. Sprinkly there would at least provide a little bit of ink, a little bit of room to work with. In fact, they're able to keep, keep this push alive. There are a few more clamps moving in addition. In fact, they're still winning out a lot of these fights at the wipeout for sure. But will they get any more clamps on top of it too? Timer slowly ticking down. They got control of, of the spawn. It's going to be the KO once more. And we know there are two foams, uh, foams coming back in overtime. Trust Nice little back and forth. They decided to take this second map home. It's a 1-1 one -one tie here, Pop Gun. Foams really struggle getting themselves established at any point. <laughs> the entire <laughs> map is yellow. Yeah. <laughs> that is a... <laughs> My goodness. Uh, and Shush doing a good job of once they had the basket opening of attacking in the right ways. Balloon getting in the right spot. Half threw in uh, like 10 different clams I saw. And then were able to go back. They also got kind of lucky with a few... Uh, clan spawns around the basket over the course there just to kind of keep things going but everybody doing their job and well when you stay alive long enough you're going to get another zooka and you can just blast as soon as they land down there so nicely done by shush bouncing back dominating that game foams never got established at all it, it's a classic case, so anytime I, anytime I no, note this, is, it's always a horrible feeling when you're having to play defense for about three plus minutes in that match, and that's exactly what Foams was kind of just jammed on there too. You know there too, couldn't get a stop. It felt like Foams, had, had, Foams was just trying to get themselves set up with just the crab tank each go around with that, with that um, heavy added with the crab. If I'm not mistaken, they had that as well. And, it just, and any space they tried to build was just overtaken by Shush each time. I wouldn't be surprised if it does come back, though, for, uh, here in Makomar Tower Control, which is another very common tower control map, all things considered. But I've been proven wrong. There's, they've been dishing out whatever ones they want to dish out, dish out at any given point. So this is a Week 5 matchup, correct? Yes. Are there any crappy maps 
in this matchup? I don't think there are. No, not um, really. Because I saw Healthy died in Osmosis play this last week, and I don't recall any of them sucking. Um, and actually, I don't recall anybody throwing hissy fits on Twitter this entire season <laughs> long, which is maybe I'm not looking at Twitter enough, which could be a good thing, but... I, I don't know. I'm just used to seeing a random, like, what the hell is this map doing here in game three? But you can't really go wrong with Mako Tower Control. And Foams is saying, thank you. A good <laughs> blaster map and the carbon playground. The question is, what are they going to use to put the paint down um, to make everything work right there? Because when Struts is getting the splats, the map is turning extremely teal um, into their favor as half is going to drop the pencil. And, of course, I think I've... I think I answered the question of who is Dr. NCP or whatever. It, it is obviously Nico Chico using the Thermal Ink Blob as they, uh, well, they've been known for using Blob in Splatoon 2 as well. So, so, so a lot of more common weapons, more or less, that, that, that um, <clears throat> Phone Forever is pretty much just now from Splatoon 2 days and then just carrying it over, over here. This is, literally yeah. a, this is literally a comp these four players would have used three years ago. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and we're in split two and three, so just slightly yeah. different, I guess. I, I guess that is kind of how it works out, doesn't it? But the first hour has been approached for, um, here by Phones Forever, and it's only just going to be stuck where it stands. We did we did see that there was that there was initial fight that did happen there, three down, I believe, on Phones Forever, and then two down on Shush. But at least I really get, get a few more in, and I'm so and and that's really all it's going to stand. Only thing I noticed there out of Shush is their clear option switches over to, to the heavy edit. And the 52 gal is the other is the other switch. By the way, it's nothing else noteworthy that I saw from the weapon that I, that I see here from Shush. Half can afford to be a little bit more aggressive here with the pencil. You want to do that uh, the traditional paint, throw down soda, and if somebody gets towards you, try to hit them with like one of your gazillion shots that you can land out here. But with the edit, you can be a little bit more of a pseudo anchor. You can start to push up. You can start to like dark behind walls at certain angles and attack from different things. So. Using that kind of a weapon while still keeping soda allows half to engage into the battle in a little bit of a different way. Like you're not going to drop a pencil right there, right there, right in front of the tower like that. Um, and that allows everybody else to, um, to kind of take advantage of that as well. And just as you see, everybody starting to swarm to the tower, which might backfire towards them now because foams is starting to foam up the map. Indeed, indeed. I'm trying, trying to follow them out there with with the rest of the weapons that they had, trying, trying to fight a lot of tank coverage. And you know, there too, just a lot of just, everything that just tried to dish out there just completely backfired. But foam, foam, nice little recovery there from Shush around the tower. It's a quick, it's a quick two down there. there I believe, uh, uh, man, the blaster has gone down on top of this. They do have the code that that is being dished out. Can be, they can afford to play a little bit more aggressive if they want to? There's Beerus, as you know, they're too not able to win the fight. Just gonna be the quick respawn though, nevertheless. It's gonna be well, a three down on both sides. The tower is just stuck in there. Sap, Sap, find someone alive. All right, damn. There we go. They're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> Let the bodies hit the floor. Finally, the dust settles, and uh, we got a little bit. Okay, so what's going on? Josh hasn't cleared this first checkpoint. We're halfway through here. Bones did clear their first checkpoint, and yeah, there was a. Just a bar fight broke out in mid, and everybody hit, uh, got sent back to spawn, it looks like. Try, try, trying to reset ourselves back here with a little bit of a bar fight. That, that, that even got, they even got sap a little confused, I'd imagine. Shout out to you over there. But the, the, now that the dust settles, it's a three down situation. We do get to see Shush be able to move right up ahead. It, and, and it's going to settle even more, though. Looks like Shush has a lot has a lot of control movement right up ahead. They, get, they are able to get the lead. They're no problem. Throwing up the point sessions. Make sure if they find any phone for members to the left, they'll just take care of them soon. They do lose two. More importantly, though, first checkpoint cleared. They get the lead change and they're not able to get to the second checkpoint once over. It's a very tough um, checkpoint to test anywho. But hey, you got the lead back, and that's shit, and, that, and that's all good. Clues dished out from Archer. Now's the time to start getting into position to guide the tower to that second checkpoint. You don't have to pause this first one here. So getting some players along that left side to start ledge camping. Players, they're going to drop around there. Archer doing a good job of controlling mid and pro team around to the right side. Now coming back over the support over here on the left. So they're good movement-wise to rotate the tower. The problem is a lot of specials were able to be built up by Shush. You do get to wait out the ink strikes, though. And here is... Oh, that's Vera. 
sharking along this uh, the, the traditional carbon spot, this ledge makes it along that left side. So, Bone's able to establish control of the enemy side. It's just how do you guide the tower in there? You're gonna have to find a way to, to get some splats. You're gonna have to do it quickly. 40 seconds is. You can be a little bit patient right here, but you don't want to wait for them to build up another ink strike that they can get. And then and that's and that's the key thing you you want to note there too is how do you, is you're gonna have to wait for, you're gonna have to deal with the inevitable strikes there as well. So how so how do you deal with the rest of Shush? They got three special they dished um they dished out there. Excuse me, Zuka's being being popped. I think think you found one on the left hand side there able to pop up all the specials now you got the kraken that that is available they want to take advantage of it but more probably this could be the lead here soon we do see the strikes there they had to dish them out early just to get them off the off their uh, off the tower excuse me but the lead has been flipped and they're going to be able to ride the star no palm it's going to be overtime coming up here soon pop gun shush riding the star all the way back to mid let's see if they can get this get this through and now you can't have half start to activate with everybody else because you're going to have to be stuck on the tower. Soda for everyone to work with as well, though. Two players down from the side of Foams. I think they recognize there is a carbon wreck here. Can they splat the carbon? And now, can they turn their attention back? The answer is no, because Bear is just that kind of a, a carbon player. Did they just 1v4 all of them? And they knew where Vera was, and they got away with it anyways. Jeez. And... You know, the, the thing I was noting there too, the thing that, that I was noting there too, Popkin, was was that it was the heavy added just falling off the tower there in, in such a peculiar spot. I mean, it didn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but I'm wondering, oh no, this could be the that could be the wrong time to drop, try try to contest. But that's didn't again didn't really matter at all. As you know, there too, the carbon roll carbon roller that Vera had, they knew where Vera was effectively. Uh, speaking, they're like, okay, there, there's going to be that card roller that's going to be learning through from Vera. Able to get one. Yeah, but Vera's able to get two anyway. And I, let's see here. There's a third, and I think that might have been the fourth. Might, if anything, the assist. But for sure, Vera had three there, Pop Gun. Yay! <laughs> um, the reason that Foams was able to get the lead anyways, I, I think it was the right play by Lord Beerus to hold on to those ink strikes for as long as they did. They held on to him for about 20 minutes or 20 seconds. The problem is they were put into a situation where they had to burn them um, without anybody else alive because the rest of their teammates were just kind of falling apart. So it's like, oh crap, let's just burn these ink, Zuka, or ink strikes. And then when the strikes were gone, they had literally nothing left to stop the tower lead going into foams is favored being very patient that was like a minute long push that uh foams put out there as well um not overextending i think they got two different rounds of soda as well okay this first one didn't work out let's control mid build up more specials here's more soda let's try again hold forward eventually something's gonna land in your favor and, and, and I get the sense they were probably trying to hold on to that trip strikes, trying to trying to see if they can solve it off just long enough. I'd imagine because you because hey, you got the GG yeah. strikes that were available. They were like, all right, we're gonna try to burn them maybe around five seconds or less, try to try to secure the win that way. But by the time, but again, Fultz well, Forever was pushing that tar up ahead. Go ahead. Well, the, the the counterpoint to holding on to your ink strikes forever is that that's your Slayer that's yep. forced to kind of like hide themselves because they can't die. They already died once with Soda. That's how they are able to get ink strikes. But now like your, your player who's usually engaging in fights is your one who has to come back and, and kind of like disengage from everything. So that, you know, it, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky to kind of hold on to those leads right there, but credit to Foams. 2-1 yeah. lead. And now, and now we approach Manta Maria Rainmaker coming up there. You know, they're two foams, two one, two one. Let's see what weapons we see for the most part. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, for a quick second, yes, the 52 gal Deco is back, up, back. But I believe it's actually on the other team side. Wiz is the one that's going to be holding on to this one. And we uh, and on the other side, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's pronounced Wiz. Wiz. Do you watch Dragon Ball? I do not actually. What? Okay. No surprise. You know what? I don't watch One Piece, so maybe if if one of these players was named like I don't even know whoever the One Piece guy is. Yeah, Boofy or whatever. Uh, <laughs> I'm just okay. I'm just gonna get canceled if I continue talking about this. Yeah, I'll give you a pass for not knowing how to pronounce Weese. All right, fair enough. Anyways, who is this here? Foams with the Rainmaker. Um, Weese gets eliminated right there. That's kind of impressive. And this checkpoint's gonna fall for free unless Balloon's got something to say about it, which they don't. 
<laughs> no, no, no response whatsoever. Right, right, right out of the gate, their phones with getting the easy check, uh, check there on the right hand side. And there's that screen being dished out. They throwing the right is the rainmaker from City, but don't. But the archer has kind of left it left being a rock in a hard place. Do you get? Do you enter the screen or do you decide? All right, I'm just gonna give up. I'm just gonna camp myself in the corner and then ultimately just going down. Anywho. Rainmaker's gonna get picked up there from half uh, on Shush's side and just gonna try to run it back the other direction. Look, if I'm Shush, I I'm fine with the results of things right here. You lose the first checkpoint, fine. At least it's not really something that's that that serious of a lead, though. It's Vera, once again, located by Balloon. I would just leave, look, I would just leave Balloon to 1v1 Vera, and obviously that was the mistake because Vera is going to destroy everybody! Come on! <laughs> okay. Jeez! This is... <laughs> Vera is feeling it tonight. Um, and Half kind of pushed up in an awkward situation. I think he's going to have to jump back right here or try to, like, uh, do what Vera did and start attacking players from behind as Nico's holding on to this Rainmaker, being supported by it. Eventually, they are going to get colorblind if they can't find a way to slip past it right there. But still, did it, th okay, so all of that is fine like we're fine across the board with both teams great play by vera they didn't save the checkpoint so we're basically at a tie game here with three minutes left to go so we're all good yep yep everything's all fine today, though we don't might be seeing the vera show at the, at the way this is going and I, and again but vera just being able to play very sneaky there trying to work around the ink that, that the team's been dishing out at the same time it's been it's been it's been giving Vera a lot of opportunities to find pretty much two or three members down in fact the rest of phone uh -oh. is just gonna be like well let's just take three members out just like uh -oh. that Vera gets the last one that's game over Bones forever three up three one very game the last five last five though very cool um looked really awesome nevertheless that last spot was insulting if they don't figure out a way to deal with vera this set's not going to last much longer mm -hmm. this is going to be mm -hmm. a five one um because how vera ended that last game and how they just completely dominated that game right there <laughs> and again i was it, during the push that shush had it, it, there was that moment where balloon and vera were locked in a 1v1 in mid and i was about to say just let Balloon take that fight. Like, Balloon is more than capable of winning that fight. But because they lost it, it just started this avalanche of Vera just knocking out one player after the other, leading to this opening um, eventually to where they shut down that push from Shush, moving into the offensive attack from... <laughs> My goodness, that last... I mean, that last splat didn't really matter. Like, the, the floodgates were kind of open up, but that's just kind of like the, the cherry on top right there. Yikes. Foams is looking I, good. I, I mean, it was a cool pick, nevertheless, and that just that just the wipeout was, as you know, the cherry on top. All, almost everything, all, almost everything you were looking for, um, if anything, if anything, the boot. Now, how do you deal with Vera? Now is the ultimate question for Shush because Vera is just running like crazy and running circles around you for the most part. And if you don't contain Vera, as you know, well, this could be this could be the set that just concludes in the next two. Maybe they got maybe they got something cooking up here in ship shape cargo code, uh splat zone, who knows? But Shosh has their work cut out for them. Uh if this was 2021, I would use Hydra and just put mines all <laughs> over the place where I think Vera is going to go. You got the point sensor to work with, um, with balloons uh Neo Machine. I would have make sure we track that player. And you know, Vera's the one making all the highlights that we're seeing yeah. here, but it's it's the whole team of foams. Um, that's like working around with that. What was the so what worked into Shush's favor in the game that they won in game two? They were able to get control of the spaces early and they were able to control map. When you have all that map control, there's nowhere for the blaster or the carbon to go. This isn't you can't just throw a curling bomb and run through it, like you have to slowly work your way through that thing. So, you know, it's so easy, it'll just out paint forehead, like, yeah, we get it. it it's <laughs> more complicated than that and especially in div x but their response here is to drop the anchor and they are just going full frontal triple shooter with a point sensor mach uh, machine to boot so half going to the end zap they're going to try to be a little bit more aggressive fight fire with fire I, I, and I and I don't mind this change whatsoever. Whatsoever there with the amount of paint, honestly, that foam forever had with the blob and the zap to just laying the blast, laying blast and Vera, just run crazy. Archer and Vera, for that matter, 
now it's like okay game plan now just just be as aggressive as you can get and they're doing a pretty good job of doing just that ball though popping the zooka having to retreat with the other with the other retaliation zooka there not able to find any not both sides excuse me not able to find any that we that we saw so far phones forever will at least get the zone re retake there you see the kraken from the uh kraken just moving right up ahead and just being able to zone them out just nicely and archer does go, i believe archer yes good going down on top of it points are ticking down there in favor of foams it's a nice little initial push there from Shush, nevertheless. And Weiss getting a nice Zuka kill. If such a thing actually exists, nice Zuka kills. One to Vera, so that's going to open up the door for the rest of Shush. To start pushing up right there, getting... Okay, a little bit of a delayed trade, but I think when the lobs from the Blah Bobbler was able to get there. But still, you get the wipeout, you get control, and this is where you just put a whole lot of kill ink on the ground, and you make foams have to work for it. They're going to have to battle their way back in there. They got Soda to work with as well. They're not going to have Zuka because the... Um, the, uh, the Squeezer just got eliminated as well as your other Slayer. But Bloom being the last player left alive that can do some attacks right here, able to slow down the rest of the phones as they're trying to come back in, and that's allowing everybody from Shush to jump right back in because they did have sodas in them. They're right back ready to go. And if they can survive this Kraken, they should be in a decent position to maybe get the KO right here. And it, well, they still got the man advantage, even though they lost control of zone. Yeah, yeah. Even with the man advantage, like, all right, we'll we'll, we'll just take it back, no problem. And yeah, you, and, and it's just the lone blob that was there. They do pop the cooler, just like that, and and pretty much just pretty much recycling the same script. Nevertheless, there you, you're able to get some good contain there from uh, from Falls Forever, just preventing Vera from trying to do a lot. And you are winning up the fights that you, that you needed to. So Josh is doing a great job with with control, not just around the zone, but also just past it. Now they did go a couple members down just earlier. Now they're just going to have to wisely retreat just a bit, trying to, trying to see if the trip trace can zone out everybody else. But there's Vera, by the way, getting two just like that. And the rest of the team should be able to collapse on, onto the third member there from Shush and Phone Forever. It should be in very good control now. I don't know about those trip strikes. I don't really know what they were trying to accomplish. They were not used in conjunction with anything else. And the rest of the members of Shush were under attack at that point. So now that's just one less special that you have to work with to deal with this onslaught that Phones is pushing out. There comes the ink strikes out yet again. But again, they're just used by themselves. They're quickly just dodged and painted right over by Phones, who gets control of the lead and are starting to tick that down towards the KO and here comes the Kraken at the absolute worst <laughs> time taking care of Lord Beerus and now coming back to zone to make sure it stays painted here comes the Zuka finally coming out from the side of Shush and that alone appears to be enough to split back into the favor the question is can they hold on to it because the blob is in a good position to keep attacking the zone and players should jump in right back in I go back to the trip strikes, you know, there from earlier. But for me, I get the sense they're just pretty much just still use trip strikes, just trying to either, either try to panic, take back the zones there. But you know that there too, the follow up just isn't quite there at all, which allowed phones to just get to retain control of the zone for quite some time. And Shush was like, okay, now we now that we lost the trip strikes, we have to just pretty much fight fire with fire. They're trying to play back to that aggression. Yes, they're able to get the zones back with the Zuka. They're able to take two members out from Foams just like that. They get the core out. They, they, now they can uh, again, same deal. Can play uh, play a lot more aggressively if they need to. Zuka's right there, not able to get, it, not able to find anybody trying, um, from that side. In fact, they're still able to take take this down. If they, they they win a fight, this should this should be good news for Shush. But there is a crack that is available. In fact, it's just, just the lead three. This should be the zone split coming up here. Pop gun, if anytime soon. But it looks like yeah, they, they're able to win the fight. They should be able to get the zone here. Unless Weiss can just do some sort of crazy <laughs> shenanigans, and yeah, if, which th they're capable of doing, uh, but ultimately Foam's able to weather the storm. There's still an opportunity for Shush to get back into this one, though. They got Soda to work with. They're going to have those ink strikes as well, and at least one Zuka, if not two. The ink strike's not going to be used on the zone. Instead, they're going to be used along that right side to try to get a splat. Two players do go down for the side of the phones. It's Archer just left onto the zone and Blah Bobbler's being rained down as well. One second left. Finally, Shush is able to force overtime. They do have a lot of penalty points to go through, but the thing is, once those penalty points are gone, they're pretty much going to automatically get lead. 
Yeah, and, and in fact, they'd be able to get the two down on top of it, too. Now they can just paint, paint all, all over that zone. Make sure to get that TO link down as fast as they can. They take out the Zap. That's going to be the cooler option going down. There's two members. That's very more importantly going down. The Blaster is going down, and this should for sure be Lee. Trip Strikes just kind of dished up for the heck of it. Shush, we're able to wrestle this one back home. And within probably like two seconds before the timer went out, they were able to get the zone at a perfect time and being able to win out that fight afterwards. Shush crawls this one back. It's 3-2 now. He, um, it never falls forever, but Shush needed that win anyway. I think I realized why they were throwing ink strikes, even though they weren't being coordinated with anything else. It's because they were just going to get getting strikes back in the next five seconds anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Sure. Just... just just throw as many ink strikes and as many zookas as you can. Uh, eventually, something is going to land and connect. Um, and that was basically what that was. Uh, just a war of attrition. Let's just keep using specials. Even though we don't have the lead, eventually we will flip it back into our favor and finally get into the right position right there. Foams didn't really have anything. Once the zone got flipped into such a favor, Foams has had like zero ammunition to work with. Um, and just tried to throw themselves back into the t uh, to the path of the zone. And credit to Shush for not feeding in there. You saw there was one opportunity where they had controlled the zone, and Weiss was trying to chase uh, Archer, who had just dropped along that left side. It's like, oh, well, let's get a free splat right there, not realizing that there's a blaster that's going to take them in basically a 1v0, like a fight that the uh, Weiss is not fighting back with. And two indirects, you're gone, and then that opens up the door for everything else. So um yeah shush just finding ways to wrestle back control the zone and finally holding on to it long enough and, and, and i do and going back to the comp they had again going full aggressive just trying to paint just trying to paint around the feet as you know um from bones forever there they had the blob and the zap that's a lot of pain and pain there to help enable the two so you, so i go back to that and thinking well you can get zookas we can get trip strikes that's that's all we really need try to farm them up in conjunction with the cooler as well Maybe again, maybe five seconds later we got the trip strike because they picked up the cooler that we that we um, saw from earlier. So I love that that they that they went full aggression on top of it. It's like okay, well if we're gonna have to deal with Vera anyway, we may as well try to play aggressive and try to take out everybody else surrounding them. And it pretty much worked out in the end. And I love that. And you know there too, love that war of attrition that, that we saw. So we are going to a game six. By the way, this is already a record. Um, Division eight or Division X has the most matches gone to a game nine ever in Ludi history of Division X, beating out the previous record of four. Uh, so it's, <laughs> it's been a pretty competitive one. This one heading that way, I don't know. First off, let's look and see what um, Dragon Ball Z team over here is gonna be using. And yeah, they're, they're saying, you know what? Let's drop the anchor altogether. We're not even gonna use pencil on this map. Well, this is Clam Blitz. Um, but Weeks is going to be using the screen um, squeezer this time around, but they're still going to keep Soda with uh, half on the end zap. And there's Nico, by the way, switching over to the custom expo as well. That's the other notable change I saw from Foam. So you, you, again, you, again, the same story really, really, really appears there for Foam. So switching the back line, still being able to paint for the same group. And you know there too, switch over to the foil squeezer with the screen as well. Which, hey, you got the auto bomb and everything and the screen over there as well. So why why not use it? Try to zone out the rest of um bones forever. Nice flat right there. We or excuse me, Bear is using their entire kit to their advantage. But good job by Shush. Question mark of sort of weathering that storm and, and like staying in this one because they're basically just getting bullied. They don't have control in mid. Josh um, being forced to retreat back, and eventually somebody's going to build up a power claim. That's exactly what's going to happen. Now, <clears throat> using the Kraken to help keep control of space as well. How is Shush going to shut this down? Well, everybody from Foams is forced to retreat to mid because they don't have any clams. So, Shush is going to get back control of their basket for free. The question is, can they finally start pushing up against control of mid? That's going to be the ultimate question. Where are the fights that happen? That's a nice little trade at the, at the very least. They're very traded trade out entirely. More trades across the board for the for the most part. Rest of Shush trying to regain control of the area as much as possible. There's half. It's going to be caught with the caught in no man's land with the trip uh, triple splash down on top. Still, what still trades happening left and right and center? Excuse me 
do you see both teams kind of stuck into this neutral state there? The, uh, again, okay. again, they still haven't fully gotten control of it. Go ahead. Can I just say that makes no sense? You should... Th these, the squid link was much wider than that little tiny pool that Vera was sharking in, but somehow their entire body was able to be hidden in it. Th this game... It, somebody needs to raise a complaint about the physics in this game, okay? That's all I'm going to be saying. You, 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 so, so, so one of these days they're like, okay, well, well, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta take all the measurements here. It's like, there's no way that physically this should actually work whatsoever. But here we are. Speaking of which, Shush is able to get the lead, lead back, and they are able to throw on the two power clams there. They got an even better push that that happened on top of it. Ball is, is their their help zone for just a few more seconds. As the power clamp being jumped in, but this is going to be opportunistic from Wee oh there, goodness. which they're able to. Unbelievable! GG. In fact, Shush turned that into a KO. It's 3 3 for the tie. Shush was with a nice little recovery there. And it's it's uh, reminiscent, the big word I just used right there, of the yeah. first Clamp Blitz <laughs> games that we saw, where everybody on Shush, once they got the basket popped, knew what their role was supposed to be. When Foams popped the basket, you saw pretty much everybody abandon it because like, oh crap, we don't have any clams. Let's all go try to find clams. And then Shush is just like, all right, this is our chance to get back in control of things. Balloon just stayed on top of that little left area the entire time and just body blocked everybody that was trying to come at them, making sure they kept control of the basket while you saw more players get clams and they didn't burn their special or their mercy clam immediately they waited for somebody to get splatted who would then go back to spawn naturally then pick it up and go in there um so yeah shush doing really good on clam blitz they uh it didn't look <laughs> it didn't look very pretty at the beginning um but things seem to have turned around for them in favor oh gosh uh tower control shipyard Hello. <laughs> so, so you know, there you know from earlier is what are the what are the odd maps for this rotation? I, I, I know some people will be looking at Sturgeon Tower Control as probably one of probably two odd ones there, but it's that's really all that it is for the it was rest of the fine. map rotation. It, it was, was and, fine yeah. in Splatoon two, and then somebody tweeted out, "Hey, wait a minute, this is a snowball -y map," and then everybody was like, "Well, why aren't we doing this then?" And, but like we're doing ship shape tower control, so like. <laughs> it's not that bad, okay? No, it's, it's, no. It, it, tower control in general just sucks in this game, but <laughs> fine. So let's think here. Uh, blaster, carbon, it's the main thing. The, okay, so the question now is, on a map like this, where you can put a pencil or a splatling on the catwalks or the enemy catwalk, um, there are good defensive and offensive positions for an anchor player to utilize on this map. Are we going to see Shush go back to that? Or if, since they've won two straight games with this in-zap anchorless comp, are they just going to stick with this because they feel like they found something right here? It, it wouldn't shock me, at least maybe from two seconds from now, if they want to stick to, to that same um, anchorless comp. In fact, that's pretty much exactly what they did. It's been successful for the last two maps. You there they, when they were down 3-1 they're like all right we're gonna switch over and try to tr and try to play fire with fire they're trying to just be in your face the entire time so conventional thought is maybe we could use a sniper as another option but because they gotten so much success why change off of it and also they're gonna just use the foil squeezer for this map too it's gonna be a map for bishop if almost wants to get back to control of this set after losing two straight allowing your blaster on a map like this to go off would be a would be the key to letting it happen right there. That is a blob. Um, of the blob being used on power control of uh, chip shape. I'm sure there's some blob expert in chat. Oh, this is the best blob situation <laughs> you could possibly have. Like, okay, cool. Um, but it will at least provide some paint again for Vera to do stuff like that and for Bishop to eventually get activated as well. Um, it, but I mean, like, if you think about the speed that we're seeing out here from at least Shush's comp. You got to be starting to think, of, okay, what are some ways to slow them down? Think wise, maybe that's. Yeah, and and that's and that's really the ultimate question there too. Vera just just got just went off there with three, clearing out the space that they need for phones forever to just do, to just do their part. <laughs> I should be able to clear out the first. I see all right then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. I just saw yeah. Bishop make a great play. I had to acknowledge. 
Yeah, yeah, no, no worries whatsoever. By the way, this one is about to is about to get out of control here and here in a hurry. There, two members have gone down. Shush needs needs to pump the brakes on this push, which they should be able to. Wrestle Shush with a nice little recovery there, only reaching it to the second checkpoint. That path, that pathing path can get a little tricky there, and the and the rest of Pulse Forever was in perfect position to do so. As you know, there are two. Are, are, as you know, there are two. Bishop just just made a magnificent play, and it just it was able to it was able to make that happen. But made that happen top there. So you got to be thinking defensively for for foams. What are you going to be doing defensively once Shush eventually gets control of mid, which they're doing right now? Usually, when you have an anchor, you can like post them up on that right side where you see Vera right there. But like the carbon's not going to attack anything from that right side, and the, I don't know if the blobs like the traditional thing. So that makes this first checkpoint in my mind just theory wise a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about that right side scaffold you can just focus on everything in front of you and to the left so that clears the first checkpoint for them at ease and we're essentially got a tie game right here because all you have to do is get to the first checkpoint or the second checkpoint and shush has the lead and we got two minutes and 30 seconds left to go so yeah tie set basically a tied game halfway through game seven good stuff yeah, yeah, no, and the back and forth that we're seeing from, that we're seeing right out of the gate there, shut with the even beautiful response, and this this jump is gonna get punished real quickly there for foams, and and with two members quickly down, they should be loop loop up ahead there with the blob, get everybody in position there on top of it, as we, as we do see um as we do see that blaster just able to get another one on top of you just planted on that right hand side, and so now they gotta clear through the second chapter, which they should be able to. It's two down right out of the gate. But, uh, and it's just gonna be Nico painting with the blob, trying to help enable the rest of the team to do their part. That's the checkpoint already cleared. Rest of Shush trying to see if they can get a response with this Tom where they can afford to play aggressive, but that crack may have other ideas. It is gonna be three successful down. More importantly, the checkpoint's cleared. It's down to eight points remaining there, Pop Gun. I was saying for Foams, Bishop had to be the player to make something happen, and they certainly did on that push, controlling both greats, hopping back and forth from mid, and then sweeping through that right side. The movement. Moving with the tower and the rest of their teammates, clearing down everybody. A nice little push right there, initiated by Bishop yet again. The question is, how are you going to hold on to this lead? Yes, you got a full checkpoint lead right now, but Shush can go right back. If they can get a screen in the kind of a right spot to kind of force some players around into a certain area. Oh, he's getting caught out there, though. Archer with the end zap winning that 1v1 just because... Weiss was a little bit out of position, but everybody else from the side of Foams is starting to get eliminated right here. This is starting to look a little dicey. 50 seconds left to go. Shush knocking on that door, throwing some ink strikes ahead, but they need to move up with those ink strikes. That's exactly what Beers is starting to do, and they're getting yep. some players down with it as well. Yeah, but, but the question is, is the follow-up going to necessarily be there? There's ball that, that's just lurking on that left-hand side with that with that Neo slosh machine. That tower is just going to get solved. As you know, there are two moving up with the trip stars. Can they make that one happen? That was that was cheeky and awesome to watch. Ball is able to make that one count and th count there. Now, can the Zuka can also fall suit? Not able to find any value and just roll right into the middle to make that one count. Two members down, kind of at a, kind of at a very odd time there. Bones Forever can just probably afford to play a little bit more defensively there. Trip strikes are being dished out. Ten seconds left to go. Shush at least has control mid, but they gotta make the but they gotta make this push count, Pop Gun. And again, I wonder why they're using the trip strikes right there. I know like they can get them back quickly, but now you're in overtime. You're not gonna have them all well, you're already splatted, so nope. it doesn't really matter. Are they even gonna keep this going? Here is <laughs> dive bombs onto the tower. It's not gonna happen. Foams builds up a massive lead and does just enough to hold on to reclaim lead in this set and one game away from taking the dub. And 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 you know the truth is what was the what was the idea with the trip strikes? I feel uh feel like in the sense of hey you got the trip strikes out there, now can we try to try to build the space that we need to make to make that one count? Just not able to make just not able to make that one work. And you know they're and you know they're too we out of position earlier and ultimately they were able to win out some of the fight but it may have stalled them out for just a few more seconds and counting. And what we kind of saw there, Shush would not only just ran out of gas there, Foams Forever doing doing their part to stop him. You do get to see the nice little replay there, Barrow what with the, the hell was ball. that? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was wondering. That's what I was wondering, is that that flick was pretty sick on the ball. And then the rest of the team just followed suit. And we did see, get to see Beerus just desperation dive onto the tower just to keep it alive. But pretty much at that point, you know it's GG well played. And Foams just takes home surge and Dargatrol.
Yeah, well, as soon as Foams was able to weather the storm of Beerus pushing up with those ink strikes while the tower was moving into Foams' territory and they were able to clean up a couple of splats, at that point the game is basically done. Like, it, it doesn't really matter what... Well, I mean, it does matter, but it's, it's not like, oh, shush, in this 2v4 situation where they have control in mid, they really need to figure out how to win those things. Like, no, that's not the, the critical thing. The critical thing is... How do we keep that push going when we had control of the tower? Um, and those are questions for better commentators to answer because we're moving on to game eight. Uh, Remaker and Undertow. Oh, my, a Barnacle Dime is an actual thing in this one. I thought chat was just being yep. weird as usual, but no, they're, they're on to something. We might get there one game away. Did <laughs> see, see, chat's just being weird there because they'll always never let live down Barnacle with the letter I in its, in its, in its name. And they're just like, wait, 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 we, we got to get to game nine. But both teams realize, well, Undertow Rainmaker is ahead of us, I suppose. And the other thing, too, is Shush had the right idea, but the question is capitalizing on the objective, too. They're, I would not be shocked if they're just going to stick to this aggressive comp because it worked pretty well, actually, even on, even in that loss of certain target control. Question is, will, the question is, will they, they should, are they going to stick to their guns? Or we realize, okay, maybe, maybe okay, for whatever reason, we gotta go, we gotta go back to the anchor uh, setup, and we'll be seen here in about a few seconds. <laughs> they are and literally, they, well, literally sticking to their guns, except the uh, the weapon that I can't tell if people are being serious or not about the uh, Neo Splashomatic. <laughs> so Lord <laughs> Lord Beer is saying I can get even more ink strikes with this thing. <laughs> well, there it is in a main of charge up. So. Uh, okay, yeah. so maybe we maybe farm up more trip strikes. Maybe that will work in Undertow Rainmaker in this side. But uh, Rest of Forms Forever is like, no, nah, we're not gonna we're not gonna allow you to it's... do that. In fact, this is gonna be the first checkpoint, maybe. And shout out to Saf giving us this fantastic view of the wall. Here <laughs> 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 we go. Start moving along. You're welcome. The left Anytime. Side right here. There's nowhere for Doctor Nico Chico to go. They end up getting eliminated nicely done by Shush. Then we start to see a bunch of them. I've gotten too distracted with the wall that I'm like, wait, it's like, what, is, what else happened other than the push getting stomped behind the left ring maker? Now that we, now that we got the views, okay, Shush is able, it should have a clear path here up to this uh, first checkpoint. That should be the checkpoint cleared. Yes, it's gonna be the uh, spot. Just gonna be too little, too late though. That checkpoint, okay. that checkpoint's there. Two members are, are are gonna be respawning here. The rest of the are, are at least able to, to stop that push. But either way, that is gonna be the checkpoint for Shush in the grand series. I just now read Bishop's name, Nokia Phone, um, <laughs> which, given how many times they've been splatted so far today, that is not an accurate name that they're using right there. Holmes trying to take a stab at this checkpoint. By the way, it's very nice of Shush to able to do that because Archer was chasing them down. Uh, it looked like they were going to get splattered right before they popped it, but still, Bones able to respond in time with a control of the, uh, uh, what is that called? Podium pedestal? They cleared the checkpoint, yep. and they got lead on top of it, going around the catwalk on the right side, and Shush only has one player left alive, and Balloon is just going to, you know what? Nobody get near this. I'm going to make sure this resets until my friends come back to help me out right here. Smart, cautious play by Balloon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and can they follow it up with, with a nice little Zuka, Zuka pick as well, which they will not. But as you know, they're too. It's a great patient play overall, just trying to make sure. Okay, but will will phones be sneaky at all? They, of course, of course not. If we get a few. Okay, that was like nice moving all around. And of course, Bishop's like, okay, that, okay, let's get two two picks there with the blaster. Not no problem whatsoever there. Weiss is, is still working large. Nice hold again. Well, we're stuck into this neutral side. I'm not sure where we're getting a nice hold from, all things considered. Bolts Forever slowly responding back. Now it's going to be this fight around mid. Bolts Forever losing one number at a time. There's the trip strike just going to get farmed up left, right, and likely center there as the Bolts teams are kind of just trying to still trying to figure out who will get the advantage next. Balloon's just going for it, right? I saw them jump right down in front of Vera, and it's like, there's no way they're going to live to tell that tale. And they got the trade out of it. Now, uh, able to just... Okay, eventually, you throw the Zookas out, and something's <laughs> going to happen. And something did happen right there. They're like, oh, really? That that splatted Nico? Okay, yeah, cool. It? So that opens up the left side for us to go. Half trying to be a little bit patient there, letting Weiss and Lord Beers start to push up along the left side. They do lose Balloon on the right, and that's going to mean a Kraken is going to come out. Now you're going to have to run 
for it, and there's nowhere for them to go because there is a blob and a carbon waiting for you. Minute 30 left to go. All that's in between phones in their victory right now. Yeah, minute and 30 seconds left to go. I was actually wondering oh. if that very silly Zuka shot that did one one Zuka out of the out of the cluster oh. there was able to get make the difference. In the grand scheme of things, the Zuka's being fired. There's three members already down there for Shush. Bones able to Bones forever, excuse me, able to get the nice little hold. It's still they're still staggering just a little bit more. As more trip strikes un, un, unsurprisingly being farmed up there, just being thrown with thrown with pretty much no regard where where where, where it stands. Nico throwing throwing out um Nico, excuse me. Me, publishing with the Rainmaker. We're down to a minute left to go, and ultimately, what, what stands from Phones Forever is I don't think this is going to be enough for overtime. Not that it really matters anyway, as Shush sh shuts that one down. Shush did have an opportunity before, but they didn't see the Sharking Archer. This time, they eliminate Archer immediately and throwing out the 50th ink strike of this game. But they're off to the other right no. side! Oh! Finally, what? someone tries it. Lull them to sleep on the left side, realizing if we go right, we're going to do enough to get below that 41. And this is a long way to go along this left side. Mind you, there is no uninkable anymore, so they can paint a path and go. But you're not going to avoid the Zuka no. from Whis this time around, not Balloon. Is that a delayed wipe? Yeah, Archer's the last one, yep. and they're back there, and they're going to have another Ink Strike ready to go, I'm assuming, by the time. I don't even know if they're going to get the Rainmaker or not, which is back on the other side of the map. There's a couple of players going down. It is top. Can somebody grab it? I don't think so. We're going no. to a Game 9. Yeah, it's Game 9, everybody, in Division X. And Popcorn, we're gonna add, we're gonna add another Division Nine game. To, uh, excuse me, D Game Nine, excuse me, to the Division X records here for this season. And this has just been, this just continues the storyline of how competitive this division has gone. Mind you, at the top of the broadcast, both teams really have nothing to play for at this point for, in terms of playoffs. Oh. Yet they're, they're playing for pride. We're playing and for honor. Really, and and hey, both teams are playing like like they have a playoff spot ready, ready for them. Even though, of course, we know that they're playing for the honor and the pride. There, I and this is this was the push. It lulled them to sleep left side. Be ready for the unsuspecting right side of the right hand push there that Shush just did. It was not only successful. Now the next now the next step is played defensively, and the Zuka shot was kind of just waiting for phones forever. And you know there too, game nine is approaching. They're playing for pride and honor and more importantly they're playing for a result that they can use in their plus three bio that's going to get them kicked out of plus three anyways because it's not going to be good enough for the voters so there's a lot on the line right now and yes uh saf put it update the counter we're going from eight games get eight game nines to nine game nines in division x how about that Great times. So we went back to the camera. I was nines. Right. All of the game nines have been with me. <laughs> oh. No, not all of them. I'm Why just kidding. But like every time I get a game nine and I am broadcasting, we it just it happens to me every time. <laughs> well, good. That's good. The, 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 yeah. the best part is Saf is um. Do you do you have always there are, more often than not, I think in all the looting tonight's uh, sets you have broadcasted you have always let off with the game nine somewhere along the way. How do you feel about adding, how do you feel about adding the division next to your resume resume here at this point? And we're now approaching particle and dime zones coming up here. Of course, we've had three. By the way, we've what had is, okay. three game nines. Go ahead. What is the lore of? Did Falco say Barnick? Barnicle or something? What? I, I, it's Barn literally Icicle? just spelled Barnacle, but for some reason the I replaced the second A. It's just misspelled. That is the lore here in Splatoon in oh, Moody yeah. tonight. Well, <laughs> so, so be it. So there is the Splashdown Blob, or the Splashdown X Blosh, I'm sorry. And Beer is saying, yep. hey, I got 50 ink strikes that last game. This weapon's pretty good. I thought people were joking on Twitter. No, look at this. I can just keep throwing these all game. Let's go. So, so Beerus is just on. It's just auto farming trip strikes for oh for days. Okay, now that's the that's the wipe out there. And then we saw the Zuka game the last pick. That's gonna be Shush being able to move up ahead. Okay, and the, the okay that Zuka shot even lands, and it takes out Bishop too, which was the blaster player that that goes down. There is a Zuka that that could be used. And in fact, actually popped, I believe, from Phones Forever from Vera. See if they can get any value, but that's all it's going to be. And Popgun, that's already down to 55 points remaining and still counting. 
So you just gotta wake it out those ink strikes and kill Lord Beers. No, not run into a random suction bomb half being like, oh, cool, that that's great that so that happened right there. So what is the splashdown cheese on this map? I, I guess we're gonna get the answer to that. It also helps that you have Kraken leading the way as well, so maybe splashdown not really necessary. But they do it anyways. Foams stays in this one. They weathered the storm. Now can they create a lockout? You see the Nokia Foam Bishop trying to push up with Farah along this web side. The tag team duo. But they do lose a couple players on the back side. That means somebody flanked around. And there's an attack onto the zone. Flipping it back in the Shush's favor. The, the, the thing I just noticed, by the way, with Shush, is this is a lot of pain that, by the way, that, sh that Shush is just dealing out. If we're gonna farm Shush, we'll just, just, just dish out anything that just resembles popping a ton of ink. And that's what they're doing they're, they're doing here in zone. So now, so now the ultimate question now becomes, how do you, how do you continue to hold this one defensively there? Foam's forever still lurking large. There's, okay, there, there you go. There's two members that already gone down. Out of the Kraken and already gone! Well, and... Bones is gone with their penalty points too, on top of this. Now you can't jump in. Oh, yeah. well, okay, yeah, but you can. I was gonna say maybe you can't jump in because of the ink strikes, but they don't really last a, a lot once they start exploding. So surviving right there, getting a nice flat on half, who was starting off this set using anchor weapons, that has opted to go with the end zap to match a little bit more aggression. Um, has been working out so far, but right now, Bones does have this splashdown they can use to kind of counter some specials to keep control of zone. Archer putting some paint down as well, but they need to get some splats. Archer recognizing that, trying to push up along that left side, at least keep people away from the zone long enough for Bones to get the lead before Shush flips it back into their favor. Vera has no regard for the enemy ink whatsoever, ultimately gets eliminated right there. Shush gets back control of things, a lot of penalty points they got to chew through, and here comes the crack. Yeah, Kraken crack, just popped there, uh, popped there by Bishop there, just trying to zone out the rest of just trying to uh, preventing them from being able to paint over the zone the rest of the group. Archer and the rest of the phones forever kind of just surrounding the zone for as long as they can. We do have three three members around that zone there from Shush. Just there's gonna be a lot of painting output that is happening in, in the grand scheme of things. There's a trip strikes once again farm because of course they will be as Bishop does go down on top of it. Point Satcher has been dished out there. Should be able to find a few. There goes Vera going going down on top of it. It is a fight for neutral in the grand scheme of things. Flying Zuko's across the board to no picks whatsoever. A minute and 35 still and counting. We are still stuck into this neutral game. Vera goes down once more and it will be Weiss taking out Bishop on top of it. Shush has two members down. Now they're trying to move up ahead, trying to make sure that Bonefire does not have a chance to leave the base and try to force the lock opposition. Our double Zuka didn't do anything. Guess I'll just have to get splats the normal way. And hey, that actually worked out too. But the problem is they just have so many points that they got to chew through. A minute 10 left to go. Foams has to be uh, starting to get a lot of uh, advantage into their favor as well because they're getting a lot of these splats. Now the question is for Foams, do you want to just go up into the base and try to get some splats? And it looks like they're able to do that from a distance. Was that Nico able to get a splat right over there? Nokia phone sharking along this left side, using a crack. It is more players from Shush are just getting eaten alive. Penalty points gone. I, half is just going to try to make a hero play along this right side just because they're running out of time, or at least draw some attention. Oh, no. For the rest of their teammates to get splatted as well. Foams forever. Finishes Div X with a 3-2 and two record. Winning another game nine. Welcome to game nine central, and it ends with phones forever fin finishing the job. And Shush, I, I gotta give credit to Shush, full ad just adapting, realizing this is gonna work out better for us. Going full aggressive, we tried it. We tried the. We tried to come up with an anchor, the sniper writer, and then we realized, okay, we can actually get a lot more value if we if we can just force every, uh, force this uh, anchorless comp in the grand scheme of things. And sh but Shush just ultimately ran out of gas. The rest of Phones Forever just pi just picked up the pace there in the um there at the end. Shush with just oh, just three shooters for the most part, just trying to paint over the zone, and Phones Forever just popped, just found the the responses for every bit of it in, in this game nine. And oh my gosh, did Vera? Okay, so Nokia Phone on that last kind of play just abandoned Vera on that left side so that they could go back and take care of half. It was just like trying to draw a lot of attention, and Vera just like one v three them all on that left side anyways it's been kind of the story of the set <laughs> honestly i mean just i mean this is div x you have to be pretty darn good at the video game to be here and we just saw hero plays from a lot of different players across this set which was fun to see 
Um, I like the adjustments that Shush made throughout the set to try yeah. to... Uh, I mean, that's that's kind of what the point of Ludi is, is just like, okay, let's throw this game plan out the window. Let's go with plan B. And, oh, we're one game away from losing this one. Let's go to Neo Splash and really just, like, harp on those ink strikes. Um, and it looked like Shush was... Or it looked like Phones was the team that's running out of steam as well. Like, Shush came out yeah. really aggressive in that opening and was beating Phones pretty good uh you just find ways for something to land maybe one zooka here or there or a cheeky kind of kill with the x splash slowly opens up the door to make things more neutral and over the course of the game wrestle it back into your favor good set good stuff good stuff really hard. yeah i i was really impressed with that the entire time because it, it's one of those things where you get to just observe textbook plays getting passed back and forth it's like a game of catch um, and then you just get to watch the games themselves be passed back and forth like that. And then, yeah, game nine is where it all comes out. And then it just, it felt, there was a certain intensity to that Barnacle game. I, I don't know. I, I could see it a little bit in chat. I felt it a little bit. That was, that was good stuff all around. And, and one of the best things, and what, and this is almost a, t a case of how this set it really kind of just shows adaptability because you know that there are two pop guns, a Ludi set, you know, ch just tweak things up, uh, tweak things up um, after like maybe three or four games. Like, okay, th this didn't work. What what can we change here? And how can we adjust with that throughout the rest of the set? And I feel I feel like with Shush doing doing just what they needed to do, it worked out well. And Pulse Forever is like, okay, we're just gonna keep with the same fundamental three. We know we can outplay them with um, Vera and Bishop with their respective weapons. And and they felt like, hey, we didn't need to tweak too much, but now we got to figure out how to respond to what to what Shush um, adapted at the end. And none of them could rise up to the prestige that was put on display by Saf, um, <laughs> giving us great spec cam views throughout all nine of those games. Excellent job to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Shout out to the undertow wall. Got to be one of my favorites. <laughs> Well, listen, guys, I appreciate having you on so much. That was a really good time. But we have another set coming up. We have Crossfire versus the Grillers in Division 3. And listen, I, I have a feeling our next commentators are going to talk about it a little bit. But this group in Division 3 is something else. <laughs> it's something else. Everybody's 3-0. Half of the group dropped. So I think only two folks are going into the playoffs, uh, hypothetically. Yeah, Luton right. started at the beginning of June, and those three teams are going to play their ma their their season starts tonight and ends yeah. tonight as well. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Well, listen. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. Um, any any sh socials or shoutouts that you'd like to make, Popgun? I'll start with you. Uh, my son is sleeping in the room behind me. He's going to be turning one at the end of this month. Oh. And that is awesome. So, shout outs to babies. Yeah. Also to Baby Flyer as well. Oh, shout out Baby Flyer. Love that. And Kion, anything you'd like to say? Any any shout outs? Any socials? Plug yourself. Tell me. You will find me prob pro probably in, probably in the staff room trying to cook up the rest of the weekend for y'all in terms of the slate. So, and probably trying to find any sort of drink that can keep me awake for the next few hours. So, that's all I'm going to say about that, Saf. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much. Hey, you know what? We're going to take a brief break. We have Division 3 coming up. Crossfire versus the Grillers. You don't want to miss it. You are watching Ludi Tonight on Splatoon Tourney. Don't go anywhere.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Looty tonight on Splatoon 30. My name is Saf. I am your host. If you didn't know that, well, you know, you knew that. All. Can, come on, it's right here. It's on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm here with Dark and I'm here with Jordan. It's nice to see both of you again. How is it going? I am always excited to be here. <laughs> um, I, yeah, no, I'm always excited to be here, especially for this one. Um, and Jordan, we have no, we don't really have, we have Jordan, but we don't really have Jordan. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I see, I see something. I see my, we have my shoulder. Um, <laughs> we have a still image of my shoulder. Uh, so that is going to be, that's going to be how I am represented for the time being uh, until we can get that sorted out. <laughs> Can you move to your... Oh, I already have. Oh, uh... I think the camera's frozen. I think that's the issue. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, listen, listen. We have Crossfire and the Grillers. Um, and this group, you guys, this group, I, I said it before break, I'm going to say it again, is really, uh -huh. really interesting because we have multiple people that, or multiple teams that dropped in this group, and now there's only three left, and they are all three and zero. There's Jordan um hello so that's so interesting and uh -huh. i mean the grillers dark the grillers have been around for a really long time uh yeah i'm i'm gonna be completely honest in my history of playing splatoon i have a very bad memory of knowing teams but i do know the grillers and that's about, that's about as much as i can say about them because i do know they are a, a big time team and i do know they've been around for the longest and i I believe that is the team with Debbie on it. We all know we all know Debbie here, right? In this industry, smile. Mother. <laughs> Debbie, uh, Debbie, the the beloved Hydra Splatling mom of the Splatoon community. Uh, right, Hydra Splatling. I I'm will be disappointed in this first game of the season for these two teams, by the way, that we do not see a Hydra Splat Splatling. Like just just for just for the culture, you know, just for the just for the culture. And see right now, uh, just a quick, um, just look at the, the lobby where everyone's lined up because I believe everyone is in on the bit where they know that they not only are the, are they we are seeing their first games of the season week five by the way, um, we are watching this entire groups and their games this weekend and this weekend alone, which is wonderful. Yeah, it is something pretty exciting, although. Uh, three of the teams have dropped from this group. <laughs> the Grillers did manage to get in a set with two of them immediately before those teams each dropped, which I cannot imagine how that must feel, especially <laughs> especially with the absolute the absolute antics that happened in that in that week one set that they had um it was it, it was something else uh, true and utter chaos which with a game like this you know what more can you ask for in all honesty you know three teams are in here for this weekend alone and only two of them are going to be making out for all you know one of these teams you're seeing right here right now could be the ones that actually end up dropping out or and losing out the, the set, or these two teams could be the ones who make it to playoffs. We don't know that. I don't know that. They don't know that. It's very, very interesting, and exciting. And of course, we're gonna be seeing exactly what these teams have to offer. First game of the map. I want to reiterate. First game for the season for them. I want to reiterate on Robo Ramen. <laughs> yep. So the first, the first official counting game for the season, and, and really the first, I believe it is the first game being played at all by Crossfire in particular. <laughs> um, but we will, we will see how how these teams go, what they what they choose to bring into it, uh, and what they what they want to do to start the set, set off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm eager to see exactly what these teams will be bringing out, bring out to the table here tonight. Um, well, first things first, though, as I mentioned, we are going on Robo Ramen Spat Zones, which, as those who have been around and have heard me cast before, you know, I, I just have a, just an utmost adoration for this, uh, for this map. I love Robo Ramen. There's like, there's. There's flanking routes, you can go under the map, there's like good long sight lines, there's all sorts of terrain you can play around with. And really, it really just leads like multiple weapons and playstyles to be to be like legitimately viable here. And that's why I love it so much. Yeah, yeah, it is it really 
kind of broke the mold of Splatoon 3 maps when it was released because of those so prominent flank routes underneath the path from spawn to the zone. But here we are getting right into it. We have the teams. Their players have been selected. Their weapons have been selected. There is a wiper. I personally am a big fan. And of course, Devi on that vanilla Hydra Splat line. We also see from the Grillers a Blob Lobber Deco and the N Perry Splat Dually. Interesting weapon picks from from the Grillers. You know, th those two weapons are not, not not something to see too often in the competitive scene. So I'm very excited to see exactly why are the reasons why they might be bringing it out here tonight. And already both of these teams are just at the rip, seeing exactly who's gonna be able to get the first <laughs> the first zone flip. <laughs> but that first phone goes to Crosshair as they get the pick on the heavy, and they're just with it. Two follow up after that, they the Crosshair has a strong opening. Yeah, three picks. Uh, Debbie's already spawned back in, but uh, the Crossfire do have control of the zone, and they won the fight to hold on to it. Debbie is set back up in that snipe position, but there is the Wiper from Crossfire moving in forwards. Yeet sneaking in with a splashdown and trying to get the zone, only neutralizing it, trying to survive as the rest of the team collapses onto Yeet. Uh, now, 9, 5, 3, 4, 8, going for that, going for picks with the Kraken, or at least trying to get something done in the zone, not being able to get anything, and even despite that pressure that the Gorillas were putting on them, Crossfire are able to hold on to us onto it. They they lose the zone again and but the Zuka comes out and pushes the Grillers back, getting two down once again. An attempt at a distraction to try and get the zone into their into their name just failed in a failed push and now Crosshair has a solid hold over mid, a solid hold in the area pushing up to the enemy side, and they're looking to keep the Grillers down and out for as long as they can. 18 points remaining. These two teams are desperately trying to close this game out here and now, but no, the Grillers barely managed to be able to save this game, save his name for just a little bit longer, get the zone giving a hefty penalty to Crossfire. Yeah, this is this is a Pretty desperate move from the Grillers to tr try and do anything to at least capture the zone, but they've taken control once again. If you'll notice uh, out there, there is that sprinkler that uh, MVP from Crossfire has put on that on that top area right above the zone, and that is just a constant supply of paint going out onto the zone. Uh, I'm wondering if if they might if. Uh, the girls might be regretting putting using that that blob deco instead of the vanilla blob because the vanilla blob also would have had a sprinkler to put on there. Then again, the Kraken is really powerful. And low, look at that three down on the side of Crossfire, and the girls take the zone. This it could be their chance to make something happen, but immediately Macy goes down. In a, in a very very abrupt three players out for crossfire what should have been a devastating blow to their to their points didn't actually end up being that much of a dent into their lead as grillas only got a few extra points out of that three man for one trade there and already this cr uh, crossfire has to go over, uh, over zone again they're looking to try and keep pushing girls back keeping the paint output high so they have no room to actually test the zone and with the Zuka failing to get a few shots only after getting a trade after the Zuka was gone, you know, they, they're just still looking to see exactly what can be done to salvage this push. But two go down for the crossfire. Now this is Grillers chance to actually try and really flip the tables. Yeah, but the Grillers, the Grillers are starting to find their feet here. They are getting the zone. They they were able to stifle that first very long push, and now they're getting into the positions that they want to be in to potentially start to lock out. But no, Devi is getting pushed back a little bit by those special weapons, the strikes coming out, and bombs in addition. The pencil putting down a lot of paint onto that zone, and Devi does get that pick on the on the um, slosher, but they are they have the tactic cooler buff, which, if you'll notice, the Grillers do not have. They don't have a tactic cooler, so they're going to need more than trades, and they're going to need more picks consistently if they want to hold on to a numbers advantage and not get out outnumbered by the by crossfire most definitely with the, with the, with the, with the weapon comps from both sides crossfire has a more paint heavy uh cross uh, uh paint heavy weapon lineup a lot of the weapons do put out a lot of paint so it's up to builders to try and see exactly how aggressive they want to go to get those picks in order to deny them from being able to paint and that might be exactly their key to victory here as they get Three down already. The Grillers need to move in, need to go on the aggression right now in order to stall them out as long as they can so they can be the ones to take this lead as we have the final 30 seconds. 
That is right. Here comes that hammer coming out to punish that Kraken to try to get picks, but wasn't able to. The tactic coolers coming out from MVP. All these specials coming out from Crossfire, doing whatever they can to take that zone back just for a little bit. That's all, yeah, there it goes. That's all they need to give the Grillers a little bit more of a penalty and it maybe even give themselves a confidence boost that th the Grillers aren't going to run away with this. The Grillers aren't going to, to maybe take the lead. They have the zone now and the Grillers, they will need to hold the zone to get overtime. They do Ooh. get overtime. The zone is neutralized, but the Grillers take back control two down on the side of Crossfire. The Slosher drops down, but then jumps out. The Pencil is the only one left alive. That's MVP, but now two coming out out from the three coming out to try to punish that Kraken and now the Grillers are all the way through that penalty strikes coming out from the slosher pencil in position trying to put pain on the zone it's not enough here's that hammer can the hammer get anything done the booyah bomb coming out just stalling them Grillers lose control they go two down <laughs> an overtime scramble the girl is trying 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 to hold up but they can't quite make it the crossfire barely able to manage to put a hop to that the overtime push just closing this game out in what was so much closer than what that majority of that game was wow yeah <laughs> that that was quite a quite a change of momentum like this this game was like three phases. In, in the first, Crossfire had total control. Then the Grillers started to to come back. They they made some inroads and they figured out how to get the Crossfire off their feet. But then Crossfire themselves, they were able to make their own pushes. Look at that. That was that last that last uh, push that Crossfire had in overtime to to prevent that comeback from the Grillers. They made a very good, valiant effort here. The Grillers did, but it wasn't quite enough. And that 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 last phase of the game was Crossfire coming back, getting a few pushes in that made it to the zone and installed that timer enough that the Grillers just could not take the lead. Oh, those that game at the very end was just explosive. It really came down to the wire. And and it, and, it, and and what I always like to, to talk about in these side types of scenarios, like your stamina and mentality is key here. You know, being able to just withstand all the pressure in those high, high, high pressure scenarios, especially at the end, what what, what Crossfire had coming for them from the Grillers in order to stop them from actually taking the, the game away from them. They kept their cool. And that's the kind of thing you need to keep on going out here. As we're in a, a best of nine, first to five, this, that kind of stamina is integral. And now we'll be going on to Crablet Capital with Clam Blitz, which, you know, Clam Blitz, <laughs> I, I, it's a very, people, it's a come and go with how people actually love it. But I, I think it's very, very entertaining watch especially with these two teams i know this one's gonna be another electric battle honestly i would say i think clams is the most interesting game mode it, i think it is the the game mode that in my experience as a low to mid level player um does feel like it it leaves it provides room for the most interesting sorts of of ac actions interesting plans and outcomes here we I expect to see Devi back on a long green splatling and and crossfire might yep, there's the Hydra again. It is the vanilla Hydra once again. Um Yeet has gone to the vanilla Gluk Dooleys, so that means the Grillers are running the double Booyah Bomb comp, which they might really need in order to displace the pencil and all of the defense that Crossfire will have when trying to protect their basket. The wiper gets taken out early on on the side of Crossfire. And so here we see Yeet on the left side collecting some clans, narrowly avoiding that that point sensor, that point sensor spot, and putting up that wall, trying to maybe uh, engage, trying to get something started, get a pick maybe, and allow the Grillers to make a push with the six power clans they have. Oh, but Yeet goes down. Was that? It might have been Azuka, I'm not sure, uh, but that loses the clans that they were holding onto. Devi maybe trying to just stem the bleeding here a little bit with a Booyah, gets taken out, and now the momentum is firmly in Crossfire side. But can they hold it to the to the basket? Let's see. Most definitely. One thing I do like to talk about all the time with this map specifically is that the, 
the points of interest here are the ramps leading up to that flat basket. It doesn't matter how good you have control over mid. It doesn't matter how how good your defense is over mid or what your aggression is looking like. What matters is how well you can hold onto that ramp and how well your control is over that ramp. Or even if you have a three man down scenario, if you have one player who's very good at holding onto that ramp, make sure that it does not fall under enemy control, you're still gonna be able to hold on strong. And you saw earlier just that the same exact thing happened. We're, we're, we're down a few players and it was open up for Crossword to try and get make something happen there But because they had a, such a stronghold on the ramp, they couldn't make anything back happen And now we're still at a at a mid scenario. Both of these are still going at it trying to see exactly what kind of neutral can win out this game Yeah, neither team still has scored yet with we're nearly two minutes into it. Uh, Crossfire is holding on to much more clams though. They have been able to hold mid for a pretty considerable portion of this game. And there comes that Zuka. Was that the Zuka? Something got, uh, oh, okay. Okay, two down on the side of Grillers, but three down on Crossfire. The Grillers, uh, Macy and 9-5 uh, and 9, uh, and nine uh, are going to need to Make it take advantage of that momentum, but it doesn't work. That's a wipeout that Crossfire got on the Grillers. We had two down on the Grillers, three down on Crossfire, and four down on the Grillers. And even though they are they are respawning in, the Crossfire are able to get that get that basket open, get a few more clans in, trying to score a little bit more, maybe trying to hold them back. They get even more clans in. There they go, uh, moving in, and it's not going to go past 65. Crossfire, I mean, the ones who crack that wall of defense wide open as they get to five points remaining on their first push. And now it is the double Puya bomb from the Grillers to see if they can actually respond in, in double with their points. One clam, power clam, and they're ready with the Kraken as well going into clear some space, make some space, get any pick they can. One goes down, but another goes down for the Grillers. And it's a pack to back train, and they do get a power clam in the basket, but that push is good as gone right there as another player goes down. Yeah, and we saw a whole bunch of clams. It looked like six or seven clams getting dropped as Griller, the Grillers passed that power clam forward. And those clams just were right there, ready for Crossfire to pick up. However, there is MVP going down, getting getting taken out. And there goes Echo as well. Now, uh, two down on the side of Crossfire. They are going to be a little bit staggered here, and they won't have their specials here. It is just flanking with that special ready, but it is a Zuka of which Crossfire, remember, they are running a double Zuka comp here, so that is going to be a lot of pressure on the Grillers to stay away from those Zukas, to dodge them when they come out. And there comes the hammer! There comes the hammer, but it gets canceled right away! Macy on the side here, to up on top of that but dropping down to try and get a pick on Echo, who is skirmishing out there in mid, giving up that position over there, and that might not mean there is a way to get in for that power clam that they are that the Grillers are holding onto. They'll still need to score more than that in order to take the lead. They will need the power clam plus two more regular clams. But 95348 has a Kraken ready to go. Will they be able to make the push happen with it? Or are they just waiting, waiting for something else to happen? Here comes the Kraken. The Kraken is out, and the Kraken is looking for for that next cooler, getting the pick on Draco, dropping back down, and not actually able to take and hold the space. There's one of the Booyah Bombs coming out. Are, is Devi going to be able to get this Power Clam in? Ooh, with a last ditch effort, five points of differential between these two teams before they can take it, but the Grillers, unfortunately, don't seem to be able to make it. And we had to 10 seconds remaining. The Power Clam, the Pity Clam is on one on both sides. We're going to be going into a 30 second overtime in which the Grillers only have that 30 seconds to try and make anything happen right now. Booyah Bomb at the ready. They need to make the hero play. No, but that Booyah Bomb goes down. Kraken being used to try and create some space, create some chaos, going in to see exactly who they can. But no, another player goes down on the the other side. It doesn't seem to be working as that Kraken she's got passed out. You can't do that anymore. It's just like that. I believe this game is going to go to crossfire. That it will. The Grillers, they managed the two pushes, but they were only able to score a single power claim on each one. And if they had gotten those at the same time, they would have taken the lead. But because of the way those penalty points work, it wasn't enough. And the, the one power clam plus five additional clams that Crossfile scored were able to get them the win with that fist bump out from Echo and Flinking. Oh. Yeah, this right here, this right here, that overtime push, the Kraken. Mm -hmm. Kraken cheese isn't a thing anymore. I'm sorry, Grillers.
it's not going to get you in. You're getting getting taken out there, not having the time to jump the pity clam in. Maybe they were going for a desperate jump as the Kraken was ending, but that just they they the desperation was their only option there. Most definitely, the hero plays all you have left in those stressful final moments of the game, especially in an overtime scenario. You know, sometimes you may just blank on certain things and how things work. You know, and that, that's no blame to anyone. You know, I've done it. I'm pretty sure everyone else has done it here as well. So it's just the name of the game, and that pressure management is, like I mentioned earlier, is key. You gotta have that stamina to be able to withstand this a long set like this. As we heading to game three, Tower Control, Mako Mar. Another map that I really enjoy for just how it has such a versatile um, terrain to be able to use, like, almost any weapon type here. Yeah, yeah, this is one where weapons that are, that love to shark under ledges, like rollers and sloshers, they do thrive with the sheer number of ledges here. There are fewer, fewer of the powerful sight lines for long range chargers but the ones that are there are in good spots for them so it is reasonable to bring a charger to this though i doubt i doubt mvp is going to switch off of pencil and i doubt the grillers are going to bring a charger as their backline mm -hmm. that being yeah. said um oh yeah go ahead no, I, I was just agreeing with you with, you, with the yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That being said, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, <laughs> I don't expect these teams to change very much here. No, I, I think I think these teams know exactly what it is they like to run and how they want to play. And especially with a band like this, you know, with you can get away with a lot of different weapon types. You know, what 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 other excuse do you have to not play something you're more comfortable with or you, you feel like you're better better with? Especially on tower patrol, you know, because you you can do blasters, buckets. You, we're we're most likely to see the heavy edit, not the heavy edit, the heavy the hydra stick around yet again because you know the specialty of Devi and it's. I'm pretty sure, yeah, as we're seeing here already, both these teams are going to be sticking to their guns, maybe making one or two weapon swaps. As I say that, Dynamo comes out, which a reminder that I wanted to talk about and touch up here when we had a little bit of time, that this is also on the new patch, which means this is the buff Dynamo. Yeah, yeah, I've been hearing from a few friends who play Dynamo that the buff might not actually be as strong as it seems. It might have actually made it so that the ink is just denser and not as wide of an arc. I'm not entirely sure if that's true or what the consensus is, but either way, that dynamo, even though it goes down, it is enabling the grillers to get to that first checkpoint. Uh, and they have another special ready using the Booyah Bomb, but not able to, to capitalize off of it. And now Crossfire are in position, except they're not going to be in position to take the tower as 95348 is back under that ledge, sharking as a roller. But there comes Draco on the wiper from that that side and making the grillers scramble off the tower. And now Crossfire have control of the tower and it's their turn to make their first push as they start scoring their points. Those there might have been a little bit overzealous with the dino hiding under the ledge so far ahead when the tower wasn't even contesting that area, which ended up in a three player down scenario. But as I say, that crossfire goes two down as well. With the super chumps coming in as well, that tower will be good as done clear. But all of that first checkpoint already gone, the damage is done. And now it took the the grillers to see exactly how they want to try and respond back but with a two player down i don't think there could be much they can do much other than just make sure that the crossfire can't push up any further yeah yeah both of these teams seem to be trying to make plays that are pushing a lot pushing forward fast and running into the the other team's defenses and getting taken out and so this is going back and forth pretty quick even though crossfire were able to get through that checkpoint they were only able to get it to the 63 remaining point only right about in front of that plat and not any further towards the second checkpoint the grillers they do have these defenses they do have two booyah bombs that can stall the tower as they need to here macy sharking on that right side with yeet coming in going for that two player flank but the but one of them both of them going down as well as Devi. and now even though even though mvp is the only one left alive on crossfire there, there was only one left on the grillers as well but now with the jumps coming in 
it looks like the game state hasn't really changed and the grillers are potentially poised to try and make a comeback and get through the first checkpoint themselves if they can get a pick or two here and not uh, not have to have to worry about any specials coming out from crossfire but now one going down on each side that is the dynamo roller for the grillers and that is not going to be able to continue to put pressure two going down on both sides there is the zooka from macy but flank king takes gets that pick easily these teams are just going at it as hard as they can it's still hard to say which way this game could swing because honestly it's, there's only a 10 point differential with these, between, between these two teams it could go either way and with how these teams have how both grillers and Prosser have been trading back and forth constantly it's it's so hard to say exactly which way things will swing. And now one goes down for Crossfire. Super Trump is out. The Beluga is looking to see exactly if they can get a pick or two. One, another one goes on, goes down for Crossfire. Grillers are on the tower, and they're looking to push as far, far forward as fast as they can, as far as they can. Lead is gone, and now both teams are desperately trying to contest that tower as we head into the final minute of this game. Yeah, yeah, the final quarter of the game is upon us. Draco out here getting that pick in mid, looking for that hammer, looking for a jump, turning away from a jump, but going for the pick on Yeet. Yeet goes down. Uh, Draco out here throwing the hammer onto that snipe, isn't able to get a splat with it. One jumping out from the Griller's side, and now Crossfire are behind. They have gotten through that first checkpoint. They were the, they were the first team to do so, I believe, uh, or at least to get past it. And Draco cleanly getting that other pick getting taken out, but the, that's enough. That's enough skirmishing for Crossfire to move the tower and take the lead. They are getting the tower to that second checkpoint. And now the Grillers have a quite a bit longer of a push that they will need to make if they want to take the lead themselves. Uh, the timer is down to the last 30 seconds before overtime, and now the Grillers are starting to take a bit more control of mid, but they aren't able to sustain the kinds of numbers advantage that they might need. There, look at that, 95348 responding to that shark that was attempted by Echo, and now getting that pick on Echo, and now the Grillers, they don't hold on to the tower though! What is going on back there? Oh no, just with the Dynamo was looking to try and see if they can cause a distraction. They were the ones who were distracted as the Grillers. They lost hold of the tower and Crossfire managed to clean up mid, clean up this game, and they take game three from under their noses. That was that was a a game that either team could have won. Both teams were in the lead near the end, but the back and forth pushes stronger every time and Crossfire were able to make that one push that got extra far. Oh, things are starting to heat up now at this point. Crossfire is up 3-0 over the Grillers. This is, things are starting to look a little bit dire for the Grillers, but it's not over just yet because they still have a the remainder of this set and to, to make things worth. You know, two games is, is all they have left, which might might cause like a little bit of might cause a little bit of pressure might cause a little the mentality to be shaken a little bit a little bit but you just gotta steal your resolve just make sure that you have the the will to be able to shake off these past three losses and take us to the the, the coveted game nine as we move into rainmaker manta maria <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing I'm hearing word from uh, from our our wonderful producer Saf that uh, that a game nine might be um, controversial <laughs> in some circles. Uh, that being said, we will be moving on to Manta Maria here, and this is going to be played Rainmaker on this map. Um, this is this is a bit of a different map. It's one where mm -hmm. where different strategies are stronger. Uh, than than compared to ones with longer longer sight lines and longer longer paths, but it also is very interesting because it has the the shortcut or the 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 jump on the 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 defender's left side, attacker's right side, that can be a a convenient way if it's not being guarded too well to get the rainmaker. But I don't expect either of these teams to let that go unguarded. However with the chaos of the opening, with the way the teams play this out, you never know what could happen. Mm -hmm. Almost definitely. It's, it's, it's scenarios like these where making the hero plays of just going in without any any um, sort of self-preservation is actually the, the, the kind of plays that you need to make in order to keep yourself alive or take the lead and even win a game or two off of each uh, off of the other. So it's not something to wholly rely on, but it's something to 
actively keep in mind as a just a a a sort of just throw off uh, scenario if the opportunity arises you have to take it because that's such quick and easy points yeah and being three down is never a death sentence here you can absolutely come back from it it's been done plenty of times before both teams looks like they're going with comps they're comfortable with with flanking on that slosher and the rest of crossfire on the weapons that they have been consistently playing and on the grillers we do have 95348 going onto that vanilla dynamo bringing out the tactic cooler that they haven't yet been using in this set let's see if that is going to be something that they can use to its fullest and take advantage of even though two going down on the side of grillers two are also down on crossfire and now the rainmaker is the last one left alive and they do it they take that shortcut and they go around the right side getting that first getting that checkpoint and now crossfire they're going to have to they're, they they're going to have to be careful here to to watch for any any issues in mid but it looks like they have done a sufficient job of clearing that out as of course three went down on the grillers when they got the rainmaker that checkpoint that could have been a lot more dangerous than it was but it's still not something crossfire would have wanted to allow what it would have wanted to allow that's the kind of place i was talking about be the hero that you have to be in order to win this out and and now because the girls have that first checkpoint down now if they have the opportunity to push up again they don't have to be worried about being stuck there for a, any later pushes once crossfire actually gets well ac accustomed to how the, uh, their opponents are playing for this game specifically and now two are down for cross are, are down for crossfire drawers are looking to see exactly if they can actually extend their lead even further once again find that right route seeing if what they're up stars over no two goes down with the ink strikes coming in it just looks like this might just be a dead push for the thrillers Nope, but Macy's already back into mid, Ooh. getting two picks there, getting three! And now, getting the wipeout as they tried to jump out! This is huge for the Grillers! This is- they, they are running for it! They are taking the Rainmaker and bolting, getting down to 31 remaining, not quite able to drop it into that pit, and three go down on the side of the Grillers, but that is a huge push. They are going to really, really want that. Even though they had the lead, Crossfire had ample op will have ample opportunity to take it back because they have gotten through that checkpoint now. And if Crossfire are able to make another push into into the Grillers' street area, they're going to be able to get down to a similar score. However, the Grillers are not fully safe. This is a this is a map mode where where the the game can turn it around fast you can score 99 points and still not be safe on here here we see macy sharking again with that gal it looks like trying to get trying to get the picks getting only a trade but a trade might be good if it prevents crossfire from getting a cooler faster but no the e echo out here with that zuka getting two picks looking for a third only finding a sprinkler but picking up the rainmaker and going for that shortcut will the girlers be able to defend this macy is trying here with that gal trying to stall the rainmaker but eat up top from the, with the duelies from the top row gets that pick on the rainmaker and lets the grillers have a little bit more time to defend here with that time and breathing room right now one minute 45 seconds remaining so a 30 point lead over the over this over the, the over crossfire they have majority temple control right now they can I, they have the cards that they have to either play really aggressively and make sure that crossfire can't push up any further or they can just turtle off and make sure, make sure nothing happened but just on those saying that they run away from behind manages to get that rainbow down to six points remaining crossfire out of nowhere saves this game wow that was such a such a a clean such a clean flank they just snuck right by and the grillers they were not watching that that side route they weren't watching for a flank there or if they were they weren't able to to get anything done about it and the crossfire they just ran away and now now crossfire are absolutely going to be watching because the grillers they have three up on that side and maybe just one on the right side if they're not if they're even spawned in yet yeah Ye yeet is up there in the bunker and now nine nine five three four eight is able to carry that rainmaker past the checkpoint to the checkpoint they are having a numbers advantage here the, the specials being used by crossfire that zuka's coming out but now the the zuka the strike the zuka is ready to go the slosher gets taken out the hammer comes out trying to get a pick the hammer isn't really able to do much it gets thrown trying for something trying to get a pick but now nine five three four eight with that rainmaker holding on to it surviving in that cramped spot down there flanking going for that ramp going for the the, the push from that ramp 
the Gorillas are going to need to get something done. They're going to need a special or two to move it out. The time is only eight seconds left and only a little bit left on the Rainmaker Ooh. timer. There's the splashdown and they lose the Rainmaker. There's only one second left. This is not it. The time runs out and the Gorillas are not able to come back. Oh, they had everything on the line right there in order to try and make the miracle play that the crossfire did, but they were just unable to do that with the booyah bomb, with the splash out. It just wasn't enough. They managed to get shut down mid-air, trading that opportune moment just completely nullified in that whole pretty much overtime scenario. Wow, yeah, that... It felt like such a long time, so much more than the 15 seconds or so. Like, I don't know if, I don't know when that last push made it to that, that, that lower area on the side there that they were holding the Rainmaker in for so long, at least 20 seconds, but it felt like it, it felt like so long that the Grillers were trying to get something done, trying to get more than a trade or even any kinds of picks without the pressure from that, from all of those weapons putting down the paint throwing the bombs and not letting it happen it looks I, I can't tell what even got the pick because of that booyah bomb there might have been a suction bomb down there it could have been the wiper from the side it could have been the pencil the I'm entire sure. team of crossfire had all of their firepower focused on that rainmaker and and there was simply no way that 95348 could have taken it further I'm pretty sure it was the pencil who managed to shoot through all the chaos, got that pick at the last second right there. It was the only weapon right there that had proper line of sight to be able to shoot down the the Rainmaker in the midst of, a, of the Splashdown and the Booyah Bomb. And now Crossfire is sitting at a 4-0 scenario. This is match point for them. The Gorillas, if they want to take this set, they have a mountain in front of them to overcome. They have to pay each and every single next game they have coming up to the absolute best of their own capabilities. Ship Shape Crab, Ship Shape Cargo Company on Splat Zones. If the Grillers are going to mount a comeback, this is where it starts. And we are going to be getting right into it momentarily. Here we go. This is this is the chance for the grillers to 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 show off to to shock to shock us all. Oh, and a shock indeed. What we is do going not on? Have a hydra. I repeat, there is no hydra on the griller side. Instead, we have the anarchy nova coming out from Devi as we head into this match point scenario. A complete turnabout from this team. We have. I have never seen this before as both these teams are out the gate at each other's throat getting a pick after pick after pick just back and forth trade but no one has control of the zone yet you need to be having control of the zone if you want to win oh my goodness this this I don't I don't know I don't know what to call it call this is this a is this I, I, I said they'd shock us, but that's not what I was expecting. I, I wasn't expecting that to them to shock us on the on the weapon the weapon loadouts. Um. Okay. Now we have two down on the side of crossfire. All four up on the grillers. There come the super jump chumps out, trying to trying to put the pressure on on the pencil from crossfire. Um. But now the grillers they have control of the zone and they are looking forward. Nine fifty four eight sharking there with that dynamo roller, trying to get some damage done but running out of ink, getting a jump out, but not even that out, just jumping to a teammate right nearby to hold on. Oh, Macy gets a pick, it looks like, no, yeah, with with a bomb, perhaps, and now, uh, yeah, with the, with a bomb, because Macy is on that that splatter shot, that, that hero shot replica, and now, the Grillers have done enough to take the lead here, and Yeet coming in, getting a pick, Grillers have turned this around. Actually, they have they have the zone. They have the timer ticking down, and now they have an opportunity here to take the game here. And as the timer continues to tick down, one goes down on the side of the Grillers. But the specials coming out from Crossfire, that Reef Slider getting to the zone, and the the multiple specials do take out the Grillers. There's they go three down, and now Crossfire 
can't, has the zone. There's three minutes left on the clock, but it could easily end earlier with that timer. Look at that. Heat on the right side, sharking there underneath, trying to trying to not not to get detected and be in position for a push by the girlers. They have the splashdown ready. Are they going to use it right there? There they go, trying to get someone. They do get the pencil picked off, and they get one more for the trade, and that's enough for Grillers to take the zone and hold onto this lead, giving Crossfire a penalty. A two-for-one special from the duelies comes in clutch at the final few of the integral moments as the as Crossfire had gone away with the penalty points, are now actually eating away at their real points to see exactly if they can try and get the lead taken away, but no, Grillers are just having a struggle to hold on to mid right now as they keep getting trade after trade, but it's a constant back and forth bloodbath as, as one comes down, another, there's a trade back, but there's a trade back for the trade back. It's so hard to tell who's actually in the lead right now, who has the upper hand right now, as both these teams are desperately trying to either close this game out right here and now, or stay alive for one more game. Additionally, ad <laughs> I have a loss of words as two goes down with the girls. Crossfire is looking strong right now as they now are, put, are, are looking to contest the lead. 17 points and counting. They have majority control over the zone right now. It's just other clans for the, for the, for the, for, for the zone right now. Girls has to try and hold, take control over the zone right now, but they can't. And they can't. And they take the lead right now. Crossfire is taking at their final five points remaining. They were three, two, one. Girls can't contest the zone as Crossfire cleans this game up with a What a game that was. It really looked for a moment like the Grillers actually had it under control there. Devi with the Anarchy Nova able to able to paint, but really it wasn't enough with those with not able to get enough ink jets maybe to to really hold the pressure on that that the Grillers would have needed. It, it did look for a little bit. Yeah, right there. This was the chance. And if the Grillers could have taken the zone here, that would mm -hmm. have been mm -hmm. a chance for them to keep going. But but Crossfire managed to managed to hold on. They managed to take the zone back and get the picks to prevent that paint from going on the zone. For as much as Nova is considered a weapon that that paints to the detriment of everything else. It's not even enough paint on its own to contest a full team like that if your teammates are all going down around you. And one thing I do want to note here at the end as well that cost Grillers too is the Duelies unfortunately rolled off the map at those last oh, few moments. They rolled off the that, map, which could have been the, the key difference there in order to keep Grillers alive for a little bit longer, if only a little bit longer. That's such an unfortunate thing to happen because they had victory right there. The victory was in sight, but they just couldn't hold on. Crossfire was is just too strong of an opponent that is that oh. is very true that is very true and with that 5-0 that is one of the three sets that are going to decide group d we had at the start of the season there were six teams in this group after I, two or three weeks there were only three teams in the group and all three, all of the three sets between the three teams who haven't dropped in this group are being played in the reschedule week. So, so this is the first of those sets and it's going to look good for Crossfire. But not only that, in the case that it is, uh, that it is one win and one loss for each of these teams. It's also going, this is also a good result for Dreamy Wave because then the tiebreaker will go to the number of games won. Um, and so if the if the tiebreaker is the number of game one, games won and each team wins one set, this is good for Dreamy Wave because they'll just need to win one game in, in if, they be, if they lose to the Grillers. And, and they will be through as long as... Or hang on. So yeah, Crossfire beat the Grillers. Mm -hmm. Dreamy Wave would... Dreamy Wave beat Crossfire. And if the if Dreamy Wave beats Crossfire and the Grillers beat Dreamy Wave, then Dreamy Wave only need to win one game in their set against the Grillers to, to, be, to be in. Yeah, I was following along that entire time. You, you did. <laughs>
this, 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 to sum it up, this weekend is integral for this group. This group specifically. The results of the of the next few games from these teams, which we're gonna be seeing the entire weekend, by the way. Um, uh, so keep an eye out for 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 any more Div three sets this weekend. Um, so yeah, the the, the results for the for the for these other games is is everything. Their entire Looney season run is in Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> Wow. That is right. Yeah, there there are a few different there are a few different ways this group could work out. Um, not as many ways as there were as there were before, but with this 5-0, Crossfire are in ex an extremely strong position. I do believe that either this does guarantee them a spot in the playoffs, unless it is a a, a one a one. One win, one loss for everyone, and everyone goes 5-0 again in the set they win, which would be absolutely ridiculous, and you would not want to miss what happens next. I think at that point, you would have to play a tiebreaker game. Like, I don't think there's any other way to just settle that other than a tiebreaker game. Like, what, what do either, you do? Either a tiebreaker game or or the, the Ludi TOs step in and make an executive decision. <laughs> Something's gonna happen. No. I was muted to the stream, but not to you guys. Anyway, I really want to give a shout out to Cookie, which I believe they were on the Dynamo because. Wait, 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 wait. hang on, hang on. Uh, Saf, you might be muted here. You might be muted for the stream. No, no, I, I no, we're okay now. We're okay now. Oh, okay. Yeah, are, yeah. are we okay now? <laughs> yeah, we're fine now. Um, okay, good. Okay. Oh, but like, I believe this is Cookie. Or no, I'm sorry. That's the preview screen. LOL. <laughs> But I believe the num number person is is oh no Cookie is Macy okay okay listen Macy, uh Macy was doing doing some crazy stuff too because their their uh Zuka shooting was like integral to a lot of the movement that was happening because I mean if you have enough paint on your feet you can allow the Hydra and the Dynamo to move up so I mean just impressive gameplay from the grillers however i mean crossfire was quick on their tail especially draco like jumping up onto walls and just immediately trying to cancel out that backline pressure so i mean it, it shucks you guys like the grillers really put up a fight here but congratulations to crossfire uh for getting to move forward yeah, no, yeah absolutely uh, one other thing, one other thing that was mentioned in the chat that um, we weren't able to see on stream in that first game on Robo Ramen Zones, Devi got ten booyah bombs. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, we, I, I think in this household we love special charge up. I think that's a saying. So um, just, just crank out the specials, and surely nothing will, will go wrong. You know. Mhm. Mm well, listen, you guys, it's been a pleasure to have you on here. We got to be closing out this evening and wrapping it up. So listen, tell me something about yourself. Maybe if you want to, don't be shy. But if you want to, Dark, we'll start with you. Any anything that you'd like to say? Um, you can find me both at Twitter and Twitch at SPF underscore Dark, where we post a bunch of random nonsense. I, I stream from time to time, which might be happening up and, and up and up in, in, these, in these coming days. I'm still trying to figure things out. But yeah, SPF underscore Dark, find me there, anywhere, everywhere. Awesome. Jor Jordan, tell me a little bit about yourself. What's what's going on in your noodle? Where can I find you on these websites? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can find me on on x.com. I am going to call it that now. It, it's it's not Twitter anymore. <laughs> it's x.com. Oh, you can find me there at squidoku underscore. You can also find me on uh, splatsville.social where I am squidoku. Uh, and here on Twitch, I'm Jordan Pi. That's my Discord as well. Uh, I don't stream so far. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. But I do sometimes appear on my friend's streams. Uh, you'll never you'll never know when when I'll be popping in. Oh, wonderful. Well, we appreciate having you both on as always. It's we love it. We love it here at Ludi tonight and on Splatoon Tourney. Uh, you can find me on on X, as Jordan likes to call it. You can find me on X at Safirea two P's two A's. Or don't find me. I'd prefer if you didn't. But if you were gonna find me, you can find me this Saturday, July twentieth. 
back here on Splatoon Tourney for Sea Battle, which is happening on July 20th in Seattle, Washington. If you want to be a spectator, you can pay at the door. I believe it's like $10. I'm um, one of the TOs there. I'll be there. You can come say hi, and there will be a lot of other friends there too. So you can find me at Sea Battle as well. But for the night here, we appreciate it. We're going to be closing out, and we do have sets coming at you tomorrow on Friday night. I believe we have a triple header happening tomorrow night i mean you'll see you'll probably see on the <laughs> announcements i'm not going to reveal too much okay but thank you guys so much we love you take care um drink some water it's been so so hot out and don't forget you as always are watching ludi tonight on splatoon tourney have a good one